New Year's resolutions. Well, I guess the first one's going to be sleep off the New Year's hangover before making more videos. But before I get on to New Year's resolutions, I really want to say a big thank you uh, for all the support that you've given this channel, not just in 2016, but over the years. I mean, 2016 for me was, uh, it really was one of the most fantastic years. And a, a lot of it comes down to what's on the table in front of me. I mean, I, this was the year that I got both the thermal camera through a, a crowdfunder and the high-speed camera. And, uh, you know, all, all, these have already done good service in... Yeah, so with the thermal camera, if it, the thermal video on, the, on its own looks pretty cool. But when you want to have a better understanding of what you're actually seeing, uh, then you can see all sorts of extra details in it that you might otherwise miss. So, you know, I've been in the process of making a load of uh, videos explaining the infrared, you know, a load of which are already up. The entire visible spectrum is basically one micron. And your eyes are sensitive to the 0.4 to 0.8 microns bit. So it's about 1,000 times smaller than the thickness of a dime. So the entire visible spectrum goes from about 0.4 to 0.8 microns, whereas what the thermal camera is sensitive to is about 1 micron to 14 microns. One or two more to go, um, yeah, most notably about something called emissivity. Um, but yeah, already this has actually thrown up some really interesting stuff. Uh, the first one was just... I just filmed myself on an exercise bike for 20 minutes just to see what it would look like. And you come up with this really stunning observation that the forearms are basically, the forearms and the palms are where you dump all of the heat in the body. Um, and that got me thinking along the lines that, well, all that heat is, is you're basically burning whilst you're doing that. You're breathing in the oxygen, you're breathing out the carbon dioxide. And... You can do the macroscopic calculations for the day and you know that you're breathing out about you know, a kilo, kilo and a half carbon dioxide per day, which when you actually work out per minute, that means you're breathing out about a gram of carbon dioxide per minute. Um, and the next thought comes is, okay, so you're breathing in the oxygen, you're breathing out the carbon dioxide. Somewhere in the body there, you're actually burning carbon. So where's that carbon coming from? So you, the, if I eat a sugar bar, how long is it between when I eat that sugar on the exercise bike and when I eat that, the carbon in that sugar is actually coming out as carbon dioxide when I've metabolized it. And so as a sort of you know, prelude to that, I've actually got one of these things, uh, which it, this is just a data logger, but, and it comes with a carbon dioxide detector and an oxygen detector. So, you know, just th this won't tell you uh, the details of what I'm after. I mean, for the details of what I'm after, you would actually have to eat isotopic sugar, which is quite expensive. But, you know, so that's something that's on, on the cards is, you know, how long is it between when I eat something and breathe it out? And, you know, is it different if I eat um, sugar or oil or, or whatever? So, yeah, that, that, that was one of the interesting things that came out of the thermal camera. I mean, another one, it's just sort of random stuff, but, yeah, you know, when I looked in the beehive, um, and that was fascinating for me that the bees actually in the middle of winter, the middle of the bee is 30 degrees. It's like body temperature in the middle of winter. Um, and, you know, when you actually zoom right up, I, I, I went back to the hive the next day. I've not, I've not put the video up yet, but you actually see that the yeah the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, they're all different temperatures. And it's, yeah, yeah, this for me was a fascinating observation. I took a quick look around online. And there is other video of thermal image of bees, but, and you know, if you look at it, some of the, the, the bees are like that. I mean, the one that was stunning in winter is all bees with the same temperature. Um, but yeah, I, I was curious as to why the different parts of the bee are at different temperatures. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the the rest is uh, the the various high speed cameras, and you know, a lot of this is tied up with the work on sodium and the Coulombic explosion, 
Uh, and of course, it all started off with uh, years ago when, you know, literally I had to buy this stuff and yeah, there was no help from anyone else. And so yeah, I, was, I started out with this sort of $300 high speed cameras, and they, they were pretty good. Uh, obviously, I don't know whether you can see that, but he's. He's been in the wars, that one. And then, you know, later on we went up, well, you know, when I was getting some crowdfunding, I went up to this sort of thing, which is, this is about a thousand frames per second, uh, something approaching HD. Um, and now, of course, I've got this thing, which will do about you know, 7,000 frames per second at HD. And so a, a lot of people actually had this comment, you know, why did I get this one? Um, you know, there's this Kronos high-speed camera that is, yeah, it's been done through crowdfunding. It looks pretty much on the level. And, you know, so there's a guy called Dave from EV Blog. He did a review of it and he said, you know, it looked pretty, pretty good to him. So uh, that all looks above board. Uh, so why didn't I get one of those? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, they don't exist yet. Uh, you know, they're not act, you can't just buy one. Uh, they're, they're still in the process of making them. Uh, and secondly, like I was saying, there, there's not much to a high-speed camera. There's the the chip and a load of very high-speed memory. And so, the, uh, the if you record a smaller frame, you can actually record it for longer or faster, depending on on you know, the, the chip and the memory you've got. So I'm going to take a standard frame format, which is the one that I use for most of my, my videos, which is 720p. So it's 720 lines that way, 1280 that way. And this won't go up to 720, it goes up to about 500 lines, but it'll about 1,000 frames per second of that. The Kronos will do 720, but it does it at about 1,500 frames per second. This thing is about five times faster. And not only that, um, it'll actually record longer as well because this is 32 gigabytes of memory, which I forget whether it's twice, I think it's twice as much as, as the Kronos had. And so like that, you know, the, this has distinct advantages over it. And there was another one which I was considering as well called the Edutronic, um, which would do about 3000 frames per second at 720p. But again, it had like half the memory of this, and it was they, they were about ten thousand dollars as well, twelve. So you know, it, it's almost the same price that I paid for this guy, but this guy is it's yeah five or so times faster, and it's got a lot more memory. So I was actually just playing around with this guy this morning because uh, at the moment, the water downside, this thing weighs an absolute ton. It's like a five kilo camera. So I don't really have anything at the moment that'll actually mount it. So I was just sort of doing some stuff. You, daylight is good for high speed cameras because there's a lot, daylight is actually really powerful light. Um, and I was just doing some fun stuff with a drop of mercury hitting water. is going to be on that side and a drop of water hitting you know colored water hitting water which I'm going to have over there and even at that it was doing really fascinating stuff I was just messing around but you know the mercury it sort of forms this wonderful little um, uh, mm, it spreads out as it goes into the water uh, but the amazing thing is with the mercury you don't get any counter splash it just sort of goes straight into the water there's no there's nothing that comes back out of the water. 
However, if you do it with water, there's this huge spike that comes back out afterwards. Uh, not really thought about it much yet, but it, it's fascinating stuff. Um, but anyway, the, the real reason I wanted the, the extra frames per second and the extra memory is I've got unfinished business with the sodium. So the, this camera is very comparable to the one which we got the very high speed footage, the Coulombic explosion of sodium with, and that's the one that we got into nature. Uh, and there's more to it even than meets the eye at the moment. And it's one of those things that uh, there's incremental discoveries and there are, when you discover something that no one's really thought out before, it can have much wider implications than you might at first think. And I, there, there is a reasonable chance that um, yeah, these columbic explosion things might be in that category in that, um, yeah, not just because it goes bang. I mean, the, the, it going bang is actually pretty interesting, but there are other interesting things that it does. I, I can't go into too much detail because I've got collaborators and they don't like me talking about this unless we've actually got it in print first, but there is a load more interesting stuff to go on the sodium. I mean, uh, this, this, so we actually got another paper out this year on sodium and uh, how it goes blue when you add water to it. Uh, I've got a video on it, which I, I keep on meaning to finish, but I mean, I'll just give you a brief description. That's not that. Where is that? There we go. So, that is sodium chloride. It's rock salt. Little focus. There we go. Beautiful rock salt. But you see it's blue. Now, the reason it's blue is because this sodium chloride was actually in a cave with the uranium. And that uranium blasted some of the chlorine out of the structure, leaving little electrons in there which go blue. And bizarrely enough, you actually get a very similar phenomena when you add sodium, uh, water to sodium. It, it just gets this wonderful blue color. And so there's you know, quite a lot more stuff I've got to do on that. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted, before I move on to uh, New Year's resolutions, uh, to say a very big thank you for all of your support over the years. So, New Year's resolutions. Uh, first of all, I want to put all of this kit here to some very good use. Um, obviously, some of it's going to be the more sciencey end of stuff, but you can also do some incredibly fun stuff with this. Um, so, for instance, this was a present from my brother at Christmas, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It is, oops, he's upside down. Don't be upside down. Uh, I'm not doing well here. There we go. So this was a present from my brother. It's a flying monkey. So. So, um, yeah, I was going to start with something light-hearted with the, uh, the high-speed camera. But I've got to wait till I've got some better lights and some mounts for it and all that sort of thing. Um, New Year's resolution number two. I've still got unfinished business with Anita Sarkeesian because apparently she was... I, I got sent this email saying that the, the, this guy was at this conference that she was at in Sweden or something. All checked out. And at that conference, she'd been bad-mouthing me, sort of saying how I wasn't even a real gamer. And it's like, um, really? Uh, it's true that I am a pale shadow of the, the gamer I used to be. Um, you know, so when I, when I was in my prime, and I still have recordings of me playing Unreal Tournament back in the day, and I look back at those recordings and... It, yeah, um, I'm a monster back then. Now, I'm I'm nowhere near that good. But yeah, back in the day when I was in a clan, we only ever lost one clan match ever. Um, anyway, that's sort of by the by. Um, but yeah, so I was following up what she's been doing for the last month, and it's absolutely hilarious. So yeah. Um, 
I'm going to do some stuff on that. New Year's resolution, make more videos this year than I did last year, which will actually be quite a challenge because it was quite a productive year last year. Um, and then lastly, it's not so much a resolution as a question, because um, I'm curious, uh, was 2016 the peak year for social justice whiners? Or are they going to do even better in 2017? Anyway, once again, so many thanks for all your support over the years.